part one, we completed the circle of fifths. Now in this traditional representation, it is common practice to show the circle of fifths moving around in a clockwise direction on the outer rim of the circle, and then add the circle of fourths moving around the opposite way on the inside of the circle like this. If we look closely at this diagram, we can see why this makes perfect sense. Notice that both circles start at the top with the key of C, and that this is the one place in the circle where both the inner and outer segment agree absolutely. They both contain the keys of C major and its relative A minor. The neutral keys, in that they require neither sharps nor flats. But if we step round to the left, we can see that this agreement between the inner and outer segment does continue in one sense. In the outer ring we have the major key of E sharp. The inner ring has the key of F major in that section, in that segment. These are enharmonic keys. They look different, but they sound exactly the same. E sharp is another way of saying F. Likewise, the relative minors in this segment, C double sharp minor and D minor, these are the same keys in terms of how they sound, they're just spelt differently. Continuing on round, you can see that this enharmonic equivalence holds good for each segment. You might like to pause the video at this stage just to check that out. So in the previous lesson on the circle of fourths, and flat key signatures, we progressed round as far as the key of C flat major with its seven flats. That's as far as we took it at that point in time. But just as we've done with the circle of fifths and sharp key signatures, it's now time to continue on round the circle of fourths and see where this leads us. So let's head over to the whiteboard. The last key, as I said, that we got to on the circle of force was C flat major. Let's just write that out. So we've got our stave. Treble clef. Battle ends and down goes Charles Farmer. You can see I'm not so used to doing flats as I'm doing sharps. <laughs> okay, so let's put the notes in C, D, E, F, G, A, B. The letter names Oops, put an extra C in there. And the key signature battle ends and down goes Charles. Remember to both the C's. Father. So that's as far as we've got. All the um, notes have a flat next to them, seven flats, and you could be forgiven to, for thinking that's as far as, as you want to go. But let's see what happens if we continue the circle of fourths round. Put our numbers in. So remember the rule for the circle of fourths is we take the fourth note Bring that down and that becomes the next key. So the next key is going to be F flat major. Put 
But now I'm just going to put this key signature in from the C flat. So that was battle, ends, and down goes Charles Farber. So starting on F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. Put the letters in. And remember it's a flat that we're looking at here. So let's just put the flats in from the previous key in the circle. Battle, ends, and down goes Charles Palmer. And then, just as we did in the previous lesson, let's just see what that gives us in terms of intervals between each note. Between F flat and G flat, there's a tone. Difficult to work this one out, but F flat is the same uh, as a note E. Sounds the same as a note E. Uh, and G flat you can think of as sounding the same as the note F sharp. So E, F, F sharp. It's a tone. Sometimes these take a bit of working out. G flat to A flat. That's a tone. A flat to B flat. That's a tone. B flat to C flat is another tricky one. Um, think of C flat as being the same as B, sounding the same as B, then you can see that that's just a semitone. C flat to D flat, again B to C sharp. Sometimes converting it into sharps helps you think it through. So that's a tone. D flat to E flat, that's a tone. And E flat to F flat, again think of the F flat as an E and it's easy to see that that's a semitone. So we've got here tone, 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 semitone, tone, tone, semitone. Doesn't sound quite right when we compare that to our major scale formula. Remember we're looking for tone, tone, tone. Uh, no, we're not looking for tone, tone, semitone. Tone, 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 semitone. So this is where it all goes wrong. You could argue this note is too far away from this note and too near to this note. So this needs to shift this way and no prizes this time for guessing how you do that. We do it by adding an extra flat to the B. So we've got B double flat uh, which sounds suspiciously like A but of course we can't have A and A flat in the same key so that's why we have to call this note B double flat. Okay, so let's put that uh, in the key signature here. Just stick two flats next to each other on the B line. And now let's just check. So that's now a semitone and that's now a tone. Think about it hard, but we're now going from A flat to the note that sounds like A, so that's clearly a semitone, and then we're going from the note that sounds like A to the note that sounds like B, uh, clearly a tone. So there we go, that's how we use double flats to resolve that problem. Uh, now I think I'm just going to take this back to the top of the board. So we can see in this nice neat example that the key of F flat major has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight flats. Now at this point it's worth mentioning, as I did with the sharp keys and the circle of fifths, you're not going to find pieces of music written with eight flats in the key signature. Very, very rare indeed. They do exist, but you're unlikely to stumble upon them. Um, but you will need this understanding, and you will need this methodology when it comes to working with harmonising major scales uh, later on up the uh, music theory pyramid in the next uh, set of lessons. So it's important to understand this and to be able to work with it. So let's move on. Here's the key of F flat major as it appears on the circle. So 
So now we're going to go four steps up the key of F flat major and that takes us to this peculiar note B double flat and that becomes the next key in our circle B double flat major. I know this is beginning to get a bit weird but don't worry it'll all make sense in the end. Put our stave in. Treble clef. Loads of flats. We've got battle. Ends. And. Down. Goes. Charles. Father. Having come to the end of monomic, I simply go back to beginning to battle and add an extra B there. That's our key signature from the previous key. We'll keep that for a minute, but we're going to start building it from the B note. So let's put that down here. B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B. So let's name them. B, double flat. C, flat. D, flat. E, flat. F flat G flat A flat and B double flat So notice that method there I'm just picking the flats up off this this key signature for now. Remember that's the key signature that we've brought down with us from the previous key. Um, another way we could have done that was just to use the monomic battle ends and down goes Charles father battle. Um, but that's probably a safer way of doing it. Anyway let's now do the, the usual thing of checking out the intervals. B double flat sounds a lot like A. So C flat sounds a lot like B. Between A and B we'd expect a tone. That's how I do it. Some people can do it directly, but I like to convert them back into more familiar sounding notes. Anyway, B double flat to C flat is a tone. C flat to D flat, well that's like going from uh, B to C sharp. So that would be a tone. D flat to E flat is like going from C sharp to D sharp, so that'll be a tone. E flat to F flat, well F flat sounds the same as E, so that's a semitone. F flat to G flat, that's a tone. It's like saying E to F sharp. G flat to A flat, that's a tone. A flat to B double flat, again, if you think of B double flat as sounding the same as A, that's a semitone. So once again, no surprise, it's around here that it goes wrong. We want to pull that note over this way to shorten that gap down to a semitone and that one up to a tone. So by adding a flat symbol to that, E there, giving us E double flat, that shrinks that down to a semitone and expands that at the same time to a tone, and that gives us our tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone formula. So we'll put an extra flat there on the E line, and we can say that the key of B double flat major has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine flats in the key signature. 